Okay, Rob, your article with uh, Luke Kicken is about performance measurement in general, but it has a very specific focus. It, uh, it actually compares uh, results between uh, mutual fund managed uh, portfolios and pension fund managed portfolios. Uh, specifically, this was in a Canadian context, and it specifically it was around fixed income. Uh, so when you did the study, what did you find? Well, actually, the, the main results we found is that pension plans are able to earn higher returns for their pension plan participants than mutual funds are able to generate for mutual fund clients. Uh, and the difference is quite substantial. It's more than 1%. So that's, I think, the main conclusion. And actually, uh, the, the main contribution of the article is not that we study mutual funds themselves, because many others have done that and have shown the same bad performance versus several benchmarks, but the contribution is that we study pension funds. Um, and what we find there is that they perform roughly according to the benchmarks that they uh, tell the public they have as a benchmark that they run. Now, the, uh, the, the, the article specifically dealt with, with one country, but yes. in fact your research, you've done it yes. in other places as well, yes. and uh, not just bonds, it's all, you've also done it with yes. equity. Could you yes. kind of just generalize yes. The, the, yes. the findings? Are they different or are they yeah. the same? Or? Well, they, to, to a large extent they are the same. The difference in returns between pension funds and mutual funds in, in this particular paper is roughly the cost level. The cost level of, of Canadian uh, fixed income uh, funds of mutual funds are like one and a half to two percent and that is exactly the difference in returns. When we go to the, the equity studies we have done in the past few years, also in Canada but also in the United States, we found that this difference was even higher. So we think there might be other effects uh, influencing uh, the returns like uh, more information asymmetry and therefore agency costs, hidden agency costs. So uh, Finding results is one thing, interpreting them yeah. is something else. I mean, if you, if you actually went to the interpretation side, yes. why are you finding yes. these results? Yes, in the, in the first stage of our project, we sort of compared simply the returns uh, versus benchmarks of those two ways of investing, pension funds and mutual funds. Uh, the first step after that was that we corrected for risk and all kinds of investment styles. That's sort of the usual way it's done in academics. You want to compare apples with apples. Uh, then still there was this big difference, so that could not explain the difference between the two uh, types of investments, of financial intermediaries. Um, so then you have to discuss how can we sort of um, explain this difference, and I think one of the main issues, especially in the equity context, I think, is that uh, the information asymmetry uh, within the mutual fund sector and the different objectives they have uh, versus uh, pension funds explain these results. Let me give you an example. In the mutual fund sector, uh, we can have uh, soft dollar agreements that benefit the mutual fund companies, but not the individuals that are investing in it. Those arrangements are almost always uh, uh, not there in the pension fund context. Uh, I think it's, it's mainly done in the equity uh, side, and there's less room to maneuver in the fixed income. So we might then say, so what? You, know, you yeah. find these results, you, you have some ideas to why, uh, why it's occurring. How important is it? I mean, it, it's well, only a couple of percent per year. It's, it doesn't sound like very much. Yes, well, one percent a year, and you can you can calculate on the on the back of a cigar box that if you, for instance, would save 40 years uh, for a certain uh, amount for, as a pension, uh, and you would do it through the pension fund channel or through the mutual fund channel, mm -hmm. it will ha will be a significant difference. I think up to 20 or 30 percent that you have saved. So, right. which means that your pension will be cons significantly, substantially lower. And do and you think the average uh, investor, the average pensioner, uh, retirement saver knows this? Well, I think not. And I think the best evidence is that still people in Canada buy mutual funds. And if you just look at the proposition they get, is they, get a, they can buy a mutual fund with a cost level of 1.5 or 2% in the fixed income uh, domain and up to 3 or 3.5% 3 in the equity domain, let alone the alternative investment domain, because they will be even higher. And you don't get anything back for it. Uh, the, the return of, uh, of a certain portfolio after fees is sort of the benchmark minus the cost. So the higher costs determine what you get. So why would you buy this? But still people do. Right. They are sort of uh, influenced by marketing and all kinds of other tactics to do so. But as, uh, whereas in fact uh, the mutual fund, the pension fund channel would be a better one to invest in. Well in Canada of course that happens luckily. 
quite a bit. The, uh, so what you're raising then potentially is a public policy issue. Yes. And uh, this is in fact something that's being discussed and debated around the world. There seem to be two viewpoints. Uh, one is that uh, the market should figure this out by itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other is, is that you do have this asymmetry in the information yeah. that you mentioned, and therefore uh, there is a role for yes. uh, public policy yes. to play some role. What's your view yes. on that? Well, I think that uh, pension fund participants, uh, on average, will not be able to uh, investigate this uh, in such a detail that they will see uh, the implications, as I told you before, that you can, and I can measure maybe on a, on a cigar box, but they will not. So I think there is certainly some uh, space for uh, regulation. Uh, maybe not in some uh, very strict regulation, but making defaults, default plans, in which you invest by default in passive investments. And if you think you can beat the market or can select those mutual funds that can beat the market, you can still do so. Right. So I think that would be one way. And several initiatives worldwide are starting up to sort of provide to the public uh, default systems. And they tend to discuss the default in the context of defaulting uh, a certain mix that is representative of their age. But I think you could go one step further to also give them a mix that is managed in a very simple way with low cost. So that's a, maybe a secondary question when you talk about default, but still an important one because it can hurt your return quite a bit. In fact, given you know, the, uh, the ratio you were talking about earlier in terms of how cost differentials can right. create very different outcomes in terms yeah. of ability to fund pensions, um, I wonder whether this isn't one of the great uh, sort of under-researched, underestimated issues in pension fund management. Well, I agree completely, and one of the reasons is, uh, in general, pension funds are heavily under-researched, especially the outcome of it. People are now quite a lot of researching uh, how you sort of make the plan, how you govern the plan, and also the asset liability management uh, side. But I think to really measure what they produce and how efficiently they produce it, uh, that's not done enough. So I think uh, that's also why I'm still researching this topic. I'm still investigating the CM database and I can promise you that we will come up with some more results in due course. Right, so, yeah. so maybe this is then the final question. W what are some of the new avenues or additional factors that you may be looking at to, to, uh, to sort yes. of unravel the puzzle? Yes. I didn't uh, mention yet the, the economies of scale discussion. I think there is a uh, is a huge benefit of scale if you look at the highest aggregation level of pension funds. Certainly if you look at the administration side, its scale will be, will be lower in cost. But for instance, if you believe in active management in equities, maybe scale hurts you. So there might be a too large uh, size of a particular pension fund might hurt your returns. Actually, we are researching this now and our first results show that scale indeed uh, hurts active management in the equity domain, but it doesn't in fixed income and alternatives. Actually, in alternatives, scale is good. That's what the first results show. Right. So, and when you say alternatives, what, what alternatives kind of investments I mean, are, you, are you talking uh, about? Let's say real estate, private equity, hedge funds, and uh, infrastructure. So apparently there, you need a certain size to be able to monitor these investments. Whereas, so it's a quite a heterogeneous product, whereas the homogeneous product of buying an equity index it's something that anybody can do at low cost. So, uh, I, I guess we conclude that uh, we've opened up a very interesting box here. Yeah. Uh, we're finding some very interesting things, but we're not done yet. There's, uh, there's more, uh, there, there, there are more results to be, uh, to be gained, and uh, hopefully ICPM will continue to play a significant role in funding this kind of research. Thanks very much. Thank you.